Hello everybody, today is May 31st, 2023, and this is my experiment with investing $1 a day in 55 different dividend stocks and $1 a day in 10 different cryptocurrencies. Now you see this dotted white line, that's the start of the day, and you can see right here it's eh, been basically trending downward. We look at the one week period, and you see for the one week it's actually been uh, maybe a little bit, tiny bit up for a one week period. We look at the one month period, but you can see it tells another story where it's going down. We look at the three month period, we can also see that it's going, trending in a downward state. And we look at year to date, and we can see right here that it's also been trending mainly in a downward state. We come over here and we look at my cryptocurrencies, and you can see right here ADA is up, Bitcoin's up, Ethereum's up, and XLM is up as well. And uh, EVA and Comp was up a little bit at nine minus nine dollars, and I was thinking about selling it. But you know, I'm just gonna hold on to it and wait, ride it out. Don't need to cut my losses just yet. You can see right here all these financial stocks are also. In the negative, in that sense, you see a few of them, PNW, SO, they're in, the, they're in an upward state. CWH, this one right here, Camping World, is up $15.94 from when I started investing it. Even though I had a down day today, I'm still up quite a bit in that one. We can see right here, Cisco is up, IRM is up, from when I first, just first started investing. If we come over here, and we also want to look over at settings and we come over here to history and we come over here and we look at dividends we can see that uh, we have uh, actually a good month coming up in my sense because I'm seeing right here because I only started investing for the first time in my life January 6 2023 and you can see right here I'm already starting to get dollars and I'm literally investing one dollar a day each in 10 different cryptocurrencies and one dollar a day in each of trading days of 55 different dividend stocks and you can see right here some of these are already paying out a dollar 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 uh, one of the ones that has been very big surprising, or at least more than one of them, ABR is also pretty surprising too, with $2.82 for the month of May. But this one right here, UAN, $9.12. And they didn't just do it once. They've been doing two quarters in a row. They paid out pretty well. So all the way down here in March, if we come down here, we can also see that they pay out very well. So they did a $3.21. And I only had about $30 in it. So it was literally over a ten dollar ten percent um ten percent dividend payout for what i had at the moment and what i also discovered too when i was doing this so if we come over here because i actually did this for all of them i discovered that uh haynes brands hbi and i know there's news and stuff but you know if you're a new investor kind of like myself if you come over here to do show all and you click on dividends you notice they haven't paid me any dividends because they cut the dividend completely. So even though Haynes Brand's saying that it has a dividend yield down here, uh, the, a lot of them are saying you know they, they they cut their dividend because they're trying to reinvest in the company and keep it that way. But what I did discover is if I come over and swipe over, and if I come down here, and I I went and I wanted to make sure that each one of them are still paying dividends, I do a show all on it, and I come over here and click on my dividends. You can see when they actually paid out so this one paid out on march 15th 41 cents and then january uh, june 15th they're going to pay me out 52 cents so that's how i discovered that and so i went over here and i also made changes as well to my financial ones so all my financial ones if i look i'm very very heavy in finance ones so if i come over here and i do a show all and i click over here and i click on my dividends you can see they only pay me one dividend back in February 10th. Now, they're not doing very well finance ones uh, because banks and all, all these different loans that are going out. Uh, they still has a decent dividend yield. But the experts are saying, you know, either hold or sell. Don't, don't listen to the white nose noise. Pick, a, pick stocks that you think are going to do well and go with them. Now, for me, what I was doing was I was rebalancing out. I know in my last video I pointed out uh, that I changed these to a monthly. So I've actually changed all my finances ones to weekly and I pushed all the money now for now because you know I'm willing to take higher risks for myself I'm not telling you to invest or anything in these different things I'm just telling my own story I'm not giving you any financial advice in that sense I'm just showing you what I'm doing so over here I can see uh, I changed this to 2020 and then I changed to 16 because I I did some math on on all the different stocks that I have we can see right here in March they pay me three dollars and twenty one cents and then May 22nd, they paid me $9.12 for UAN. Now, if you look at the NASDAQ and you look at historical for UAN, they're not uh, a steady stock because they, they fluctuate on how much they pay out. 
So uh, it's going to be expected in quarter three, because you see right here, quarter three of last year, that this will very likely go down. This will not, they won't have this very high payment, most likely in quarter three for the next quarter that comes around. So that's probably what to expect. It's probably going to drop back down and then maybe it'll go back up. But I'm expecting for the future long term of that sense. Now, the main reason why I switched it up for UAN is if you come over here and you look, I am heavily in finance. Now, this has gone down uh, percent because I am investing in manufacturing and materials and UAN is here. So I was trying to balance it out in the sense that I don't want to be so heavily all in finances because I know finances are going to get hit hard this year and maybe even next year and years to come. So I want to start not investing so much in finance, but I still do want to keep investing in finances such as these ones up here because I organized it in this bucket. So you see VNO, ABR, GNL, BXP, Key, PRU, SBG, HBAN, PNC, EQR, EQR, FRT, RF, UDR, and JP Morgan. These are all finance ones. Now, what also is finance ones as well is you've come down here and you see O, Main, SLRC, Gain, SLG, Good, and EFC. These are also technically finance ones as well, but they pay every single month. And when I say every single month, you come over here to Rally Income and you look at it. This is how I discover this is you scroll all the way down here and you do show all and under show all you come over here to dividends and you'll see that it paid me out February, March, April, and May. Now the dividend payment is not very high but that's okay. Reality O income has been known for being a very stable and very good long-term investment of, of, of one of those dividend stocks. Now here if we come over here to Maine and we look at Maine and we do a show all when you do dividends here you'll see right here they did the same thing. Maine pay me out in March, March again, April, and May. So these are this ones. Now I also organize these from top to bottom. So how I have this organized right now is this is the highest paying dividend yield and this is the lowest paying dividend yield at the time that I sorted it. Now this can change and fluctuate depending on the value of the company if the stock goes up or goes down. So if we come over here to EFC, you'll see that the dividend payments for EFC are going to be much greater. So if I come over here to dividends, you'll see right here, 43 cents, 72 cents, 96 cents, $1.42. So EFC pays out more in that sense, but it could be and maybe is a higher risk stock in that sense because they pay out a higher dividend yield and so they pay out more. So maybe it might not be, you know, uh, a risk that you're willing to maybe take if you're deciding to invest in dividend stock. And you see right here, good also pays me 21 cents, 41 cents, and 60 cents. And I'm only investing $1 a day in each one of these. And so you can see, okay, maybe that's a pretty, that's a pretty good return in that sense if I'm only doing $1 a day in each one of these and it's giving me, uh, you know, decent returns. You come over here and do show all. And so this is what I did for every single one of my stocks. I came over here and I looked at the dividend and I see, okay, how is it going and how is it paying? 35 cents, 52 cents, 84 cents. So managing my stocks and then rebalancing them out so that I understand what's going on. Now, another thing that was also discussed with me too is, is possibly maybe going into like gold or other type of manufacturing. So I'm looking at other different companies. This one doesn't pay a very high dividend yield, but it's more of like a penny stock. And there was discussion about it. And I'm trying to do my research on, on some of these other ones that are, are new in that sense. I also have a few of these other ones. And the main reason I have it named as monthly safe is these ones have been considered as more of a, a safer type of stock. But each one of these tickers pay every single month. Now, the one I'm looking at that I want to invest in next, very likely, is land, L-A-N-D. And the main reason why land is because it is a real estate and finance one but it's real estate which engages in business owning of leasing farmland, agriculture, food, uh, with you know all the controversy that's going on right now, gold, food, farmland, fertilizer, all those type of things, they stand a very good chance to, you know, do pretty well in the future as is, you know, a possible who knows what's gonna happen in the future this year or the end of the year. They say there's gonna be a recession, maybe more. Now, there's huge controversy with that as well, where uh, I was watching and listening to all the different videos. One of the most important things, uh, one of the biggest advice that was given 
when I was doing my own research and doing my own education is listen to all the stories. Listen to the good, listen to the bad, and do what's best for you and your situation. For me, I'm trying to just find it, trying to find a way to get ahead and look at for what's going on. And and so I think one of the best most recent videos if you if you follow or if you were into finance and you follow or watch Rich Dad Poor Dad and his YouTube channel, uh one of his latest videos was actually done very well of recently, the one that was just re uh, released, the most recent one. And he was literally talking about, you know, and he explained it very well. I liked how he explained it. Think of how the banks are going right now. And think about just literally buying a loaf of bread. If you buy a loaf of bread, what does it take to make it? Obviously, the farmers have to, you know, farm the grain to make the grain. And they have, they have um, loans they have all their money in the banks and they don't have their bank you know maybe not every single buddy has their money in those big banks uh where they're saying to push all the money in the big banks so if one of those banks fail they're in trouble but then you take that grain and they have to ship it and the people that are shipping into those big trucks they also have loans they also have their money in the bank and then you deliver it to the baker. The baker has loans. The baker has banks. The small business, and then they have to make it, and then they have to sell it, when or ship it out on another trucking company. And that company also has its own loans and leases and banks. If their bank fails and they don't have enough money to pay their employees, and they're even stopped for one week, the system comes crashing down on itself. And and if you look at how the world's going, and I'm not trying to you know be like all down or anything, but I'm just you just put it into perspective. If people don't know what's going on. If the banks fail, if your local bank or whatever money you have in your bank fails and you're delayed to pay your employees or even to get a payment, can you survive one week without any pay or to pay your employees? Can you survive without paying in your bills for at least one week? Maybe it's even longer. What if you're delayed a month? What if you're delayed two months? Will your business survive? And that's what's going on right now. And then how he explained it is that's not a recession. At that point, when something like that happens, that's what we call as a depression. Because all of a sudden, everything halts and you can't do anything. And then businesses start dominoing each other. Because if you think of it, a loaf of bread, the farmer, the truckers, the baker, and then the farmers, and the consumer can't buy the bread. There's no food. What do you do? And it's like, oh, this, people are all thinking, oh, that's never going to happen in America. America's going to be completely fine. History pretends to repeat itself again and again and again. If you look at history, okay, and you take Germany right after the war, and you have the hyperinflation, to buy a loaf of bread, okay, a person had to come and stand in line because they, then they got paid daily. Okay, it wasn't, you wasn't, you know how it is today, you get paid every two weeks or whatever it is, whatever company you're working, you maybe working in a uh, labor job and you get paid weekly. They got paid daily, and they got paid daily so much cash, and, and to, in order to even buy bread, he had to go and he camped out. He would get a wheelbarrow, fill his wheelbarrow full of his money. He'd go and camp out in front of an actual baker or to get his food so he can buy his food. And he fell asleep, and when he woke up, all the cash was on the ground, and they stole his wheelbarrow because his wheelbarrow was worth more. Now, this story is a true story. And, and that's just one of many things that could, ha could and, you know, is possible to happen. Now, starvation is also a thing that's, you know, if food stops, what's going to happen? And that's why I say banking on all these other different type of, whether you're doing uh, fertilizer, farmland, gold, silver, heavy materials, things that require to, to actually go around. It's like, oh, gold, I don't want gold. Gold is in your cell phone. Gold is in high electronics or things that run your computer. The, not just gold, silver as well. Silver is a high conductor and is used in many different materials for building or building high-tech electronics or other type of devices. Gold and silver has more uses than just shiny and pretty. It has its uses. Then you also can think of other type of materials like diamonds, platinum, copper. Copper is used in all of the different electrical that's in your house. Copper is everywhere. You can think of diamonds. Diamonds. What are diamonds? Oh, shiny things on your rings. No. Diamonds are hard material that they use for drilling and digging down in the dirt. They have these drills where they have diamond bits that literally dig down and drill down for oil or other type of things. Think outside the box of what all these different materials are used for. And then think of, okay, what's going to happen in the future and how it's going to expand. So there's just so many things going on in the world. And all that really matters because all that all those people are trying to say is think for yourself, think for your situation, 
gain some educational knowledge on what's going on and figure out what you want to do. For me, I'm trying to do long-term investment in dividends and find a dividend that can find dividends, multiple different dividends, that will pay me out or pay me enough that I need. Now, I'm expecting this not to pay me well in quarter three. And maybe even quarter four, they may not pay me very much. But I'm hoping and expecting that at least two of the quarters, they'll pay me out decently well. And if, and what I'm thinking here because I was trying to do my math, so if they pay a 30% dividend yield, and on average so far it's been 10% two times in a row, if I have 1000 bucks in there, that's $100 in one quarter. Oh, that's not bad. So I'm thinking, okay. So then I started doing more math, and I was like, okay, so if I do $20 a day in each trading day, or if I do $16 a day in every single trading day, now because I had to reduce this to 16 because I had to count, I went over here because I only want to invest how much I'm investing because I was given a budget in this sense. So I counted 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14. And there's 14 right there. And then also uh, HBI, so Haynes Brand, so that's 15, plus the stock itself. That's where I got the 16. So I was like, okay, so I can move $16 a day to UAN and start reducing this one right here. Because if you look at here, finances, finances went down a percent and manufacturing materials went up a percent. And I want this to be around the 20% range. So when this gets down to 20%, I'll probably switch it back and do a dollar a day in the financial stocks, ones that I, I still believe are going to do well. Right now, I think they're all going to do, well, not all of them. Some of them I think are not going to maybe do as bad, as good as I want. VNL is definitely on my watch list, GNL. These ones that are in the negative 20. But Key Bank did just declare one of his dividends. So if I come over here, and also the experts do say, you know, it's still not bad, or at least the analysts. Don't always listen to those, but, you know, use it as your own education in a sense. I do show all. I come over here, and I look at the dividend, how much dividends they pay me. They pay me $0.29 cents on March 15th, and on June 15th, they're going to pay me $1.36. That's not bad for a dollar a day if I'm doing it. And how much do I have in Key Bank right now? I only have $63.56. That's not bad if it keeps going. So Key Bank is definitely one in the 8% dividend yield. I, th I think I'm going to keep doing it with Key Bank and see how it goes. But right now, I'm only doing, if you look at it, Key Bank, I'm only doing weekly. I changed this. I changed my, well, maybe I changed it to monthly. Why well, didn't you fix that one? Let me fix this one right now. Edit this investment. Uh, every month, this was supposed to be every week. I was supposed to have changed these all to every week because the, in my last video, I changed them all to monthly. So I'm just going to double check these real quick. So VNO, I know VNO, I definitely changed it to to weekly. So what I'm going to do is I, I just want, I will go through each one of them and I'll make sure that they're all just in a weekly stance. So this one right here is also weekly and, and I'll make sure that that's how that is. If you enjoyed this content and you stayed here this long, Thank you so much. Please feel free to smash the like button if you enjoy this content. Leave me a comment. Tell me what you like. Tell me what you don't like. Tell me what you want to see next or what you would like me to discuss or anything of the above. I'm doing this for everybody else. I'm not really doing it for myself. I'm doing it for everybody to see, you know, a beginner investor doing this for the first time, how this what happens, my experiments going. If you want to be notified, Feel free to subscribe if you don't want to be notified, but you're just interested in this content. Come back once a week. Come back once a month. Check out my videos. See how they're doing. Thank you so much for being here. You all have a wonderful rest of your day.